It was late October, and the night was as cold and dark as I'd ever felt. I had just finished a long shift at the hospital and was driving home, the only light coming from the headlights cutting through the dense fog that clumped to the ground. The road was deserted, narrow strip of asphalt winding through the hills and forests that surrounded my small town. I was exhausted, the kind of bone-deep fatigue that made my eyes heavy and my thoughts slow. All I wanted was to get home, crawl into bed, and let sleep take me. But as I rounded a sharp curve, something caught my attention. A sound, faint at first, but unmistakable. It was the sound of a child crying. I immediately slowed down, straining to hear over the hum of the engine. The crying was soft, pitiful, like a child who was lost and scared. My heart skipped a beat. Out here, in the middle of nowhere, at this hour? It didn't make any sense, but the thought of a child alone in the dark, crying for help, sent a surge of adrenaline through me. I pulled over to the side of the road and killed the engine. The crying continued, faint but persistent, seeming to come from somewhere just beyond the tree line. I sat there for a moment, debating whether to investigate. Every rational part of me screamed that this was a bad idea, that I should call someone, anyone, but the crying tugged at my heartstrings in a way I couldn't ignore. Grabbing my flashlight from the glove compartment, I stepped out of the car. The cold air bit at my skin, and I shivered, pulling my jacket tighter around me. The woods were dense, the trees tall and menacing in the pale light of the moon. The crying continued, seeming so close yet so far away at the same time. I took a deep breath and started walking toward the sound. The forest swallowed me up almost immediately, the trees closing in like the walls of a labyrinth. The ground was uneven, littered with fallen leaves that crunched underfoot. The further I went, the louder the crying became, though it was still distant, as if the child was moving deeper into the woods. I kept walking, flashlight cutting through the darkness in a narrow beam. Hello? I called out, my voice trembling slightly. Is someone there? Do you need help? The crying stopped suddenly, plunging the forest into an oppressive silence. I froze, the flashlight trembling in my hand as I scanned the trees around me. The silence was unnerving, the kind that made your skin crawl and your instincts scream that something was terribly wrong. I felt a cold sweat break out across my forehead. Hello? I called again, my voice barely more than a whisper now. The silence stretched on, thick and suffocating. I could hear my own breathing, loud in the stillness. For a moment, I considered turning back, returning to the safety of my car and leaving this place behind. But then the crying started again, this time louder and more frantic, as if the child was in real pain. It was coming from somewhere up ahead, deeper into the forest. I forced myself to move, pushing through the thick underbrush, my heart hammering in my chest. Every instinct told me to turn back, that something was wrong, but the thought of a child in danger drove me forward. The crying grew louder, closer, until I was sure I was almost on top of it, 
and then, just as suddenly as before, it stopped. I came to a halt, my breath coming in short gasps, my ears straining for any sound. The forest was silent again, but this time it felt different. The air was thick with tension. I felt like I was being watched, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. Slowly, I swept the flashlight around me, the beam slicing through the darkness, and that's when I noticed the thing. At first, I thought it had to be some kind of dark shadow, but as my eyes adjusted, I realized it was something else entirely. There, half hidden behind a tree, was the creature. It was unnaturally tall, and its limbs were elongated, almost grotesque in their proportions. The thing had the shape of a person, but something was horribly wrong with it. The creature stepped out from behind the tree, moving with a jerky, unnatural motion. The flashlight beam caught its face, and I felt my stomach drop. The face was wrong, like a mask that didn't quite fit. The eyes were too large, the mouth too wide, stretched into some kind of unnatural expression that almost looked like a grin that sent a chill down my spine. The skin was pale, almost translucent, and there was something off about the way it moved, as if it were mimicking the motions of a human but didn't quite understand how. I stumbled back, my breath catching in my throat. The creature tilted its head, watching me with those unnervingly large eyes. And then it opened its mouth. The sound that came out wasn't human. It was the same crying I had heard before, but distorted, as if it were being played backward through a broken speaker. I turned and ran. I didn't care about the flashlight anymore. I didn't care about anything except getting to safety as soon as possible, getting back to my car. My feet pounded against the ground, and the branches seemed to tear around my face and arms. I could still hear it there, its fake crying noise, trying to beckon me back to it. Panic surged through me, and I had to force myself to run faster. My breath was ragged, and my lungs were burning hard, but I didn't stop for even a moment. I didn't look back. I couldn't. The trees were blurring around me, and there were several moments when I almost tripped over myself, but I caught myself just in time. At long last, I burst out of the forest and onto the road. My car was there, just a few feet away, the headlights still cutting through the fog. I sprinted toward it, throwing myself inside and slamming the door shut. My hands were shaking so badly that it took me three tries to get the key into the ignition. The engine roared to life and I floored the gas pedal. The car lurched forward, tires squealing as I sped down the road. I didn't look back. I couldn't. My hands gripped the steering wheel so tightly that my knuckles turned white. The crying had stopped, but the silence that followed was even worse. I kept driving, my heart racing, the fear still clawing at my insides. I didn't slow down until I reached the outskirts of town, where the streetlights cast a comforting glow over the road. I pulled over, my hands still shaking, and tried to catch my breath. My mind was racing, 
trying to make sense of what had happened, but there was no rational explanation for what I'd seen. No way to explain the creature in the woods. For days, I was haunted by the encounter. I couldn't sleep, couldn't focus on anything. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw that thing, its twisted face and those horrible hollow eyes staring at me from the darkness. The memory of its distorted crying echoed in my mind, sending chills down my spine. I tried to tell myself that it had been a hallucination, some kind of trick of the light, but deep down I knew the truth. A few days after the encounter, I heard about a missing child in the area, a little girl who had disappeared a week before my encounter. Her parents had searched everywhere, but she had vanished without a trace. The news made my blood run cold. I couldn't help but wonder if what I'd heard in the forest that night had something to do with her disappearance. I never went back to that stretch of road. I avoided the forest altogether, even in broad daylight. I couldn't bring myself to drive past that spot, to risk Kiri crying again. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't escape the memories. They haunted me, a constant reminder of the horrors that lurked just beyond the edge of the forest. To this day, I can't shake the feeling that the creature is still out there, waiting in the shadows, crying out in the dark, luring in anyone who is foolish enough to follow the sound. And I know that if I had stayed in those woods just a little bit longer, I might have never made it out alive. Hope you enjoy that story, and I'll see you in the next one. See you on the flip side.